What if we designed our buildings to react to the environment around them? I'm here in Paris at the Institut du Monde Arabe, the Institute of the Arab World, and this building, designed and built in the 1980s, does exactly that. A series of camera lenses, essentially, that, like the iris of your eye that open and close and react to the changing sunlight to manage that daylight on the interior appropriately and beautifully. Hi, I'm Paul Kasavian, I'm a structural engineer, and it is an absolutely fascinating project here, Jean Nouvel's Institut du Monde Arabe, and this inspired me back in the 1980s when I was starting to learn about architecture and structural design, just to imagine that a building could have a kinetic facade. It's absolutely stunning. This is my first time visiting it. I'm here in 2024, just look at this. It's, it's almost got a mirror-like quality to it, something I didn't realize from the photographs and videos I'd seen of this. And it is, it's sort of this, it's like a combination of machine and nature as one. I'm absolutely astounding, look at this. There's 240 of these square-like areas. Each one has a series, about 50 or 60, essentially camera lenses. These are inspired by the uh, Islamic architecture, mashrabiyas. You can, you've, you've seen them since the 12th century. Uh, typically uh, wooden, carved, intricately carved elements forming sort of enclosed balconies that moderated the sunlight into uh, buildings for centuries. And so essentially this is a modern equivalent of the mashrabiyah combined with camera lens shutter mechanisms, right? Put those two things together and then you have this. It essentially makes a, a brise soleil, which translates from the French to breaker of the sun. Um, brise soleil is the architectural term, very appropriate, that we're using it here because we're in Paris. And sort of forming this combined effect that represented um, the Islamic world here in Paris. It was one of the early uh, grand projets of Mitterrand. Uh, President Mitterrand established oof, all of these grand projets, uh, translated grand projects, um, that were really new architectural, structural buildings here in the center of Paris to revitalize the city and look towards the modern age while also being respectful of the past. Okay, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated to be here, thrilled. I'm gonna go inside, take a closer look, and let's see uh, these, this sort of, the details of all of this and how it works on the interior. Really, I'm so thrilled after all these years finally being able to see, see this up close, this kinetic facade. This is one of 240 of the large panels that you could see from the exterior. If you see close up, each one of these is its own mechanism. Right? See that? In fact, hang on, let me back up a little bit. Each one of these whole panels, it's its own unit. You can see here, there's hinges, hinges, so they can open up from these locks. They can open this up, pivot this whole piece out so that they can access this, this machinery, all these different little pieces, right? This is on the other, I'm on the inside, this is a piece of glass here. And this mechanisms, all of these mechanisms um, are very intricate and each one is sort of individually controlled. That means, and this is a key point, when they made these in the 80s, this was very much ahead of its time. And over the years of use, some of them started to jam, right? Because if you can see, just like a camera lens shutter, um, all the pieces of each one of these apertures, uh, uh, let's pick one, that have to open and close, right? Let's go here. All of these that have to open and close, if one of these little parts of the mechanism jams, then that piece no longer works, right? That, the building still functions, the overall system functions, but over the years, more and more of these stopped working. And that was a real shame, right? And, and in many ways, it became a sort of, it was an issue related to rebuild buildings and separately we build machines and mechanisms. And it's rare to have mechanisms as part of a building, especially active facades. This was way ahead of its time. In good news, on the 30th anniversary, a bunch of years ago now, 2017, 2018, they raised funds to 
uh, renovate all of the facade panels, um, put in updated sensors. You can actually, I don't know if it's clear, but there's a piece right here, some of the electronics, electronics of it all, um, that could work through. These are the electronics that sense when the daylight's coming around and how to adapt the facade and to have this be in a setup so that it could work again, it could function as it was intended to function and could sort of restore the building's facade to its original intent and essentially using modern day technology to do that. And I will say, having just taken this in, I hadn't I referred earlier in the in the video to this being a, like a camera lens shutter, but this is this seems like just I'm feeling like a, it looks like a Swiss watch, you know, like that the intricacy. Even though these pieces are quite large, I think it's something to do with being inside a building, not expecting this inside a building, not expecting this this combination of refined mechanism and with a sort of respect for Islamic architecture that really comes not from the individual piece or any one bit of the metal, of course, but more from the overall context of what this produces, which is just an astounding scaled up collection. Look at this as it, as it goes past. Absolutely beautiful. So the more of these as they collect and the more you see together, the more beautiful the whole setup is. Just if you get a chance to come here, um, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's free to come into the building and access the areas that I'm at. They have a wonderful exhibition that you buy a ticket for. Um, it covers the, the Arab world and history. It's, it's an astounding building. Fantastic that it exists here. Um, and really a beautiful feeling being inside this building.